يقول راجع فوي رب سامعي محمد بن الجزاري الشافعي الحمد لله وصلى الله على نبيه ومصطفاه محمد وآله وصحبه ومقرئ القرآن مع محبه وبعد إن هذه مقدمة فيما على قارئه أن يعلمه إذ واجب عليهم محتم قبل الشروع أولا أن يعلموا ما خارج الحروف والصفات ليلفظوا بأفصاح اللغات محرر التجويد والمواقف وما الذي رسم في المصاحف العالمين وأفضل الصلاة والتم قسمين على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين اللهم علمنا ما ينفعنا وقعنا بما عملتنا وزدنا عينا وعملنا متقبلا يا رحمة الرحيم الله تيتش أسوة بنفة أصل Increase us in knowledge, in good morals, and in good deeds, Ya Rabbil Alameen. Wallah, we abandon our knowledge and strength, and we resort to your knowledge and your power. You are the most powerful, the most knowledgeable. We continue by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings in Al-Jazariyah made easy, explaining Manzumat Al-Muqaddimah, fi ma yajibu ala aqari al-Qur'an al-Ya'lama, min nazmi, imam al-Huffad al-Hujjat al-Qur'a, محمد بن محمد بن محمد بن علي بن يوسف بن الجزري رحمه الله تعالى هو was born 751 after the hijrah of our beloved صلى الله عليه وسلم and passed away 833 and we are still in the section of التجويد باب التجويد والأخذ بالتجويد حتم who has memorized these seven lines so far we've been explaining them for the last couple of months couple of months huh والأخذ بالتجويد حتم لازم من لم يصحح القرآن آثم لأنه به الإله أنزل وهكذا منه إلينا وصل وهو أيضا حلية التلاوة وزينة الأداء والقراءة وهو إعطاء الحروف حقها من كل صفة ومستحقة ورد كل واحد لأصله واللفظ في نظيره كمثله مكملا من غير ما تكلف باللطف في النطق بلا تعسف وليس بينه وبين تركه إلا رياضة بهم بفكه we start at the second line in this section, which is line 70, uh, 20, 27, line 20, 27, or 28. Bismillah. 28. We start at line 28, which is what? Why it's mandatory to learn to recite the Quran in a way that will make you avoid the main mistakes or the major mistakes or the mistakes that change the meaning. Why? Because Allah revealed this revealed it with it, with Tajweed. And thus and this way minhu from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala ilayna to us wasala arrived, reached, came with this tajweed came to us from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to Sayyidina Jibreel alayhi salam to Sayyidina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to his companions, to their students, to their students, to their students, to our sheikhs, to us. And inshallah we will go to you and from you to your students and from you, inshallah. This is why if you have this connection with this honorable, noble, sacred chain or chains, that's the greatest honor you can get. To be connected with those people and to be part of this process of preservation of, of the preservation of the Quran, to be part of the isnad. The isnad means this chain. The, the, the isnad is, is, is this connection in these sciences. It's not only in Quran. We have isnad in fiqh. We have isnad in aqidah. We have chains in fiqh, chains in aqidah. We have people who teach the fiqh books con back to connected to Imam Abu Hanifa radiallahu anhu, and connected to Imam Shafi radiallahu anhu, and Imam Ahmad, and Imam Malik, etc. Same thing in Aqidah, we have people connected and teach the book of Imam Al-Tahawi, for example, which is the Aqidah of Ahlul Sunnah. They teach it in connect, connected chain of people back to the author. That is the true knowledge, guys. And this is why the Muslims, they used to travel, to travel the lands, to travel to very far countries. Why? Just to learn from someone who has an Isnad, someone who has an Ijazah. In, those, in any of those sciences. Why? Because that is the true knowledge. That is the knowledge that is inherited from scholar to scholar to scholar back to the source. But now our disaster as Muslims, 
that we ask Google. That's our disaster. Oh, uh, no, 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 I know this website is, 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 is good, it's very famous, it's very... Who told you? Who told you, Akhi? I uh, know, no, this state is very famous, I know. Who told you, Akhi? Did you see him? Did you see his akhlaq? Did you see how he deals with people? Did you see... Do you know who his teachers are? So, you have to be very careful, and you have to, to commit, and to stick to this blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has blessed you, and to to roll up your uh, sleeves and, and keep on and benefit from this chance that you've been given. After we learned last time by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's blessings, the meaning of the Al-Ahraf al sabah and the Qira'at, we're gonna, now we can talk about the second compilation of the Holy Quran. Then we're gonna talk a little bit more about those Qira'at, why they are 10 Qira'at, and why particularly Asim and, and Warsh, why Warsh? Why Warsh? And why uh, Hamza? And why uh, Hafs? Why Hafs? And those, and those particular people, why you are reading in their Qira'ah? And what is the, the relation between this and the, the Ahraf? We mentioned the relation. And we said that these current 10 Mutawatir Qira'at that we have, they are the result of Al Ahraf Sab'a. Do you understand? So these Ahraf Sab'a, you mix them, the result of these Ahraf Sab'a is what is the 10 Qira'at. So the 10 Qira'at, in all of their differences, cannot be out of Al Ahraf Sab'a, out of the frame of Al Ahraf Sab'a. Did you get it? Did you get it? What are Al Ahraf Sab'a? We explain that. What are they? Who can tell me? Huh? Categories of differences. Categories. Exa exactly. Categories of differences in some words in the Quran. What are those categories? We explained them last class. You need to learn them so that you get an idea, and I gave you examples about them. Now, we said some Sahaba learned more than one Qira'a, right? Particularly Sayyidina Zayd ibn Thabit, Sayyidina Ubay, Sayyidina, Sayyidina who? Sayyidina Uthman. And what is the proof? The proof is if you go to the, let me show you. If you go to, Bismillah. If you go to the chains or the ijazat, if you go to the ijazat of the, if you go to the ijazat, if you go to the ijazat of, is it there? Is it there? Close that door, please. You all can see, you cannot see. Tilt it a little bit. You can, all of you can see clearly? Okay. This book, Sheikh Ayman Suwid made this book, As-Salasil al the golden, the golden, golden is for the color, right? Golden is for the color or for the adjective? No, it's not gold. Which is for the adjective, gold or golden? No, golden is adjective. Adjective? Golden is the color? So the gold chains, the gold chains, right? Is, he, is that right? Mm -hmm. If something has the, the gold color, you say golden, right? And as adjective, you say gold, gold chains. Huh? Golden? Golden? Okay. The golden chains of the Nashri Asanid. al salasil al dhahabiyya bil Asanid al Nashriya. Means the Asanid of Kitab al Nashr. Fil Qiraat al Ashr by Imam Ibn al Jazal. The greatest and number one book in the Qiraat through Tayyibah way. Which is Tayyibah al Nashr. Which is his way. Which is the way that he collected. He says, Min shuyukhi. From my shaykhs to Al-Habra al nabawiyyah to the presence, to the person of the, our beloved Prophet So these are the gold chains or the golden chains of the Nashri Asanid from the shaykhs of Shaykh Ayman to, to that goes through Ibn al-Jazri, through his book al nashr to the Prophet by Shaykh Ayman, Ayman Suri. 
so here he mentions the asaneed of all of the ten qiraat from him to the Prophet وسلم, through all of those great 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 scholars so if we go for example for example if we go to uh, let me give you an idea from the beginning of the Sanad or the Ijazah and show you the end of the Sanad how who are the Sahaba who transmitted those Qiraat for example and those are 1000 chains Imam Ibn al Jazari collected for these Qiraat 1000 chains these are only the ones that he collected and the ones that he read the ones that he read are thousand chains in his book al nashr imagine and these chains like he knows them just like his name he says i read to my shaykh in this qira i read to this shaykh and this shaykh back to this sahabi back to the prophet and in this qira this 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 so in every qira he has so many chains the total of the chains is how many in his book al nashr 1,000 chains and he mentions the books he got them from and he mentions the shapes he, he got them from etc etc uh, if we go you can as you can see in the screen if we go to the beginning we can find Imam Ibn Jazari's shapes and we can find Shaykh Ayman's shapes and we can find then the the last chain or the last generation which is the Sahaba and who are those Sahaba who got it from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam here so here for example we start this is just one example for example here he mentions his Isnad he says Isnadi you see here Isnadi, my Isnad from my Sheikh Ahmad bin Abdul Aziz al Zayyat to Al Badri, to Al, uh, to al Badri and Al Ujburi and Al Samanud. So if we, go, if we go to the beginning of this chain, you can find it here. Here. Ayman Suwaid, for example. He was born in 1955. He learned Al Ashr al Kubra. He read the Ten Qiraat through Nashr book, through Tayyibat al Nashr. To who? To Shaykh Ahmad Abdul Aziz Zayyad. This is one of his, huh? Shaykh Ahmad Abdul Aziz Zayyad passed away 2003. Shaykh Ayman, he read to three Egyptian Shaykhs and three Syrian Shaykhs. Those are the most prominent Shaykhs in the whole world in Quran. In the whole world. Without comparison or without competitors if you like this is for example one of his Egyptian shapes and his this shape he read to who to two shapes as you can see here you can see these two two squares and these two shapes they read to one shape al mutawalli and mutawalli read to al durri tihan and then he read to salmuna and then he read to two people one of them is al ubaidi al ubaidi is in, in, in my ijaza as well then he read to, to four of the shapes, like as Nudi. Then he read to, then here he mentioned the Asanid of these people to Imam Ibn al-Jazari. Then he mentions the Asanid of Imam al-Jazari to the Prophet sallallahu Let me also give you, let me show you his Sanad to Sheikh. Here, Sheikh Abdul Aziz Yunus Suq. Here he mentions his Isnad in Al Ashr al Sughra. Al Ashr al Sughra means through what? Through which book? You would learn it helps and ask him through what? Shatubiya. Shatubiya is has what? The seven Qiraat. These are seven. And the Durra by Imam al Jazari has three. So these seven of Shatibiya and three of Durraya sister, both of them are Al-Ashr, Al-Sughra, the minor Ashr. 
The Imam Ibn Jazir got and collected 1,000 chains for the same Qur'an but from different chains and with different ways of reading and that was Al-Ashr Al-Kubra. Now in the whole world, in the Muslim world, there is no other readings that are accepted and reliable and authentic other than Al-Ashr Al-Sughra and Al-Ashr Al-Kubra. Okay? Al-Ashr Al-Sughra and Al-Ashr Al-Kubra. Through Shatmiya and Durra and through Tayyib. Okay? So Sheikh Abdul Aziz Ayun Sud and Sheikh Bakri Tarabishi, both of them they read to go to Sheikh Al Hulwani. Sheikh Al Hulwani, he had those the, the main the two main students were who Sheikh Abdul Aziz Ayun Sud and Sheikh Bakri. Sheikh Ayman he read to Sheikh Abdul Aziz, and this servant read to Sheikh Bakri, and my brother and my cousin we read to Sheikh Bakri. You understand how it goes? You understand? So here, Sheikh Ayman is mentioning his Asaneed through Tayyibat al-Nashr, which is different from Shatibiyah. His Sanad through Shatibiyah is higher, because here in, in Tayyibat al-Nashr, there is an extra Sheikh between his Sheikh and between Sheikh al-Hulwani. So look here, Sheikh Ayman, look here, he read Al-Ashr al-Sughra, Al-Ashr al-Sughra, see, Al-Ashr al-Sughra to Sheikh Abdul Aziz Ayun al-Sud. And Sheikh Abdul Aziz of Yunus Sood, he read to Sheikh Al-Da'atani. Also Sheikh Bakri read to this, to this Sheikh. And then they read to who? Sheikh Al-Hulwani here. So here we have this chain, this uh, Sheikh Al-Da'atani, why? Because he read, he, this is through Al-Ashr Al-Kubra. He read to him also Al-Ashr Al-Kubra. And then Sheikh Al-Ahmad Al-Hulwani, then Al-Marzuqi, all the way to Imam Ibn Al-Jazal. Then if you go to the end of, the, of these chains, who will you find? Now you find, look here what he tells you for example. He tells you Asanid Hafs for example, the chains of Hafs or the main ways to Abu Ja'far, the Qira'ah of Abu Ja'far, Abu ja for example. Then he mentions all those qira'at here. Asanid al-Imam al-Kisa'i ila Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's giving you now examples of Imam al-Kisa'i and his connection. So he first showed you his connection from him to his shaykhs back to Imam ibn Jazari. Then from Imam ibn Jazari to al-Kisa'i, one of the ten qurra. Then from Kisa'i to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Look for example at this chain. He's telling you what? Al Kisa'i, look he did he, who he read to. Al Kisa'i. He read to Hamza, for example. He read to these four. And these four read to these two. And these two read to this one. Then they read to these Tabi'een. Who are the Tabi'een, your sister? The students of who? Sahaba, right? These Tabi'een, they read to who? Who can read? Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mas'ud. Sayyidina who? Uthman. Sayyidina Ali. And they read to who? To Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, who got it from Sayyidina Jibreel, from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Did you get that? Let's give you an example about Hafs. For example, so that, that shows you Sayyidina who? Uthman. Look here, the Kisai also, who do you see here? Sayyidina Zayd bin Thabit. And here Sayyidina Ubay, and you see that? Look here, now, that's still Kisai. Okay, now Abu Ja'far, look up Abu Ja'far. Qiraat Abu Ja'far, who, who's, who are the Sahaba? See, Sayyidina Zayd again, Sayyidina Ubay again, Sayyidina Umar. You can see that? Now look at this Qira'a, who's that? Imam Ya'qub, one of the ten Qurra. Look at the Sahaba that he has. Sayyidina Ibn Mas'ud, Sayyidina Ubay, Sayyidina Zayd, Sayyidina Uthman, Sayyidina Ali. See that? Go to, did you see that in every Sayyidina Uthman and Sayyidina Zayd and Sayyidina Ubay, almost in every Qira'ah you, you find him. What does that mean? Because they learned more than one Qira'ah. Is that clear? Now let me take you, show you finally Hafs. Hafs is not to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi 
Wasallam. Anyone knows Hafs took from who? From who? Asim. Asim took from who? Abu Abdul Rahman al Sulami. Asim took from who? From Abu Abdul Rahman al Sulami. And Abu Abdul Rahman al Sulami took from Sayyidina Uthman. And other Sahaba. From Sayyidina Ali as well. Okay? Look at, for example, Hafs Islam. Hafs and Asim. Asim took from Abu Abdurrahman al Sulami. Also, Asim took from Zir bin Hubaysh. Another one. And this is why Shu'ba, you know Shu'ba, the narrator, the other famous narrator of, of Asim, right? They told him how Shu'ba is reading different from Hafs. So he told them, I read to Abu Abdurrahman al Sulami and I read to Zir bin Hubaysh. And Zir bin Hubaysh read to Ibn Mas'ud. And Abu Abd Rahman Sulaim read to Uthman and Ali. So I taught this as that Imam taught me, and I taught this as that Imam taught me. They are all connected back to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Neither Hafiz nor Shu'ba nor Asim, not nor anyone can add any letter from his own mind, or even the way they're reading those blessed ayat of the Holy Quran. So, for example, here, Bismillah, here is Asim. أساليد الإمام عاصم إلى رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم. Look here, عاصم. Who are the two main students of عاصم, guys? Huh? Who are the two main students of عاصم, my sister? حفص and who? شعبة. حفص and شعبة. Make sure you don't hold the phone with your hand. So Asim, he passed away 127 after the migration of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. 127. Who did Asim learn from? I told you. Here, Abu Abdurrahman al-Sulami, Abdullah ibn Habib. He passed away 74 of the Hijrah. And who else? Zir ibn Hubaysh, radiallahu anhu. And Sa'ad ibn Iyas, radiallahu anhu. These are three, he read to these three. And those are three, who did they read to? Abu Abdurrahman al-Sulami, he read to Ibn Mas'ud, and Ubay bin Ka'b, and Zayd bin Thabit, and Uthman, and Ali, and Uthman, uh, and Ali, and Allah, and Ajma'in. And Zir bin Hubaysh read to this, and Sa'ad read to Ibn Mas'ud. Everyone read to many. And those Sahaba, of course, they read to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Is that clear? You have an idea now on how those great Sahaba, they learned many Qira'at and many and we mentioned that those people, though the Arabs, they were oral people. They memorized, they learned by memory. They didn't depend on writing and, and reading a lot because they didn't have the tools and they were illiterate as the Quran described them in many ayat, right? And we mentioned that the differences are not big. Sometimes in the whole page we'll find one difference. And we said most of the differences are about what? Which of the categories of the seven ahruf, which is of the seven ahruf has the biggest percentage of the differences in the qiraat? The dialects. The dialects. So most of the differences in the qiraat are about what? Dialects, different dialects. And that's, that was the main reason why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Quran in in many ahruf. That's a, that's a question I'm going to ask you guys. What is what under which category comes the main the main differences uh, the main the main differences in the qiraat under which category ya Ahmad? The dialects, right? Now, of course, the Sahaba they learned those dialects. Or those, sorry, those qiraat in all, not only the dialects, and they started teaching the Sahaba, the, the students, their students. And did the Sahaba have knowledge? So they had, were there problems among the Sahaba about the qiraat? Who can answer? Yeah. They were, they were problems. Like what? Don't be afraid. Say. Oh, uh, sometimes they say, where did you get this? 
Exactly, in the beginning. Good job, in the beginning. Some problems occurred between Sahaba about the Qiraat. Yes, why? Some of the Sahaba who didn't know about it, first, there were problems. And this is why they went to the Prophet ﷺ and I give you a couple of hadith about that. Then did they learn or no? Yes. Were there any problems later on among the Sahaba about that someone is reading in a different Qira'a? Were there any problems? Huh? Were there? No. Why? Because they learned. They learned from the best teacher Sallallahu Now, what will happen? In the time of Sayyidina Abu Bakr, even in the time of the Prophet ﷺ, or in the time of Sayyidina Abu Bakr, some people, uh, those Sahaba, you know, they dedicated their lives to the Quran. Sayyidina Ibn, Ibn Mas'ud, and Sayyidina Ubay, and Sayyidina Zayd. So some people started, of course, they're becoming their students, and now, these people, they're reading with the Qira'a of Zayd. Now these terms, focus with me here. Now these terms started emerging, and this Qira'at from that time started forming. Now people say, oh, which Qira'at are you reading with? He said, I'm reading the Qira'at of Zayd. Oh, which is the, what Qira'at are you reading with? I'm reading the Qira'at of Ubay. Right sister, focus here, don't need your head on anything. Don't lean your head because you fall asleep. Don't lean your head. This is reading the Qira'ah of Ibn Mas'ud. Just like now, just like now. If you're reading a cer certain ayat in a certain way with certain waqf, and people tell you, that who? Who's reading? Who, who did you get that from? You tell them ah, from Abdullah. So they, uh, this, is, this is how Abdullah is reading. So it becomes like his qira'ah. But did Abdullah make it from his own mind? No. He got it from his shaykh, from his shaykh, from his shaykh, etc. Did you get that? Same thing in that time, those like schools, no, not schools, those qira'at started being what? Specialized. We started having specialization in qira'at. So Sayyidina Zayd started specializing in those qira'at, Sayyidina Ubay, Sayyidina, and now students are learning. And now they're teaching each other. Now, as you mentioned, the Kabi, of course now the, the Islam spread, and in the time of Sayyidina Umar, I want to show you on the map, in the time of Sayyidina Umar, he conquered and he defeated the greatest superpowers of that time. The greatest superpowers at that time. Who were those? Who can tell you who were those? The Romans, the Romans and? The Persians. The Romans and the Persians. In the time of Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu, he, because those empires, they were trying to finish off the Muslim state. They were trying to do what? To finish off the Muslim, the Muslim state. What did he do radiallahu anhu Allah? What did he do? Of course, the Muslims did not wait for those empires to finish them off. And they were able to liberate and conquer the Roman and the Persian empires. Big percentage in the time of who? Sayyidina Umar radiallahu anhu. In the time of Sayyidina Umar, he, the Muslims were in control of Syria and Iraq and Iran and the whole Arab Peninsula. Now, huge numbers of people accepted Islam. And most of them are Arabs or non-Arabs? Non-Arabs. And now people are reading and we have less number of teachers. Right? So now, and, and many incidents happen and now the need emerged to have the copies of the Quran, the standard copies of the Quran to be used by people so that they don't change the Qur'an because the Qur'an did not have dots and did not have harakat at that time and people who are non-Arabs they might read the word in a different way but the Arab person when he reads he, will, he knows the context he knows this word for example it's kataba, it's not kutiba it cannot be kutiba because it doesn't fit the context do you understand? 
But the non arabs will not know. And this is why we needed two things. We needed more teachers, and we needed also copies of the Qur'an. And then later on, Muslims did not stop at that. They found that we need to put the dots. And we need to put those, some signs to teach people this is ku tiba, it's not ka. We need people to know this is ku, not ka. And we will, we will mention that and how it developed until we have it in the way that we have today. Look at the, look at the, at the map here. This is Mecca. Guys, the Prophet ﷺ was one person here. He was here, one person. Now how many people follow him? How many? 25% of, of the people in the world follow this great messenger sallallahu alayhi wa Minimum. Despite all, despite all the, the types of war against this religion, intellectual war, political war, all types of wars against Islam and Muslims, despite this fact, Islam is the fastest growing religion in the world and the largest religious group are the Muslims. It's not the, the Christians or no, that's not right. That's what I believe. It's the Muslims. Look how it's spread. In the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, when he passed away, all of this Arabian Peninsula, he transformed them and moved them from being more than so many tribes that were fighting for years. He united them and made them like one body. He united all of this Arabian Peninsula. And in the time of Sayyidina Abu Bakr, they got part of Syria. And of course, this is Palestine, it's not Israel. There's, I don't believe something called Israel. This is Palestine. This is just uh, because of politics, they put Israel here. Anyway, this is Palestine. Palestine was part of Sham, just like Jordan and Lebanon. So this was all Sham, okay? This Zionist entity is just, these are just thieves who stole the lands of its people. Until now, they're stealing every day. They're stealing more and more pieces, and, and just, just last week, uh, they had so-called elections, and one of those, of those, of those thieves, he, uh, he, he's promising his extremists, and he's telling them, I'm going to get more land from the West Bank. I'm going to, I promise you, if you vote for me, I'm, if I win, I'm going to get more land. So he's, he's showing, I'm going to steal more land. I put that on, on my page, if you like to get it to get information, to see how under the whole world, under the watch of this, of this hypocrite world, they are stealing and they are boasting that they are going to get more land and steal more land from its people. Just like, just right now they are doing it. You don't need to, to live in 1948 when they made the war against the Palestinians and made massacres and took their land. No, you don't have to go that far. You can see it now and you can read and see how he is promising if he wins the election, he's going to steal more land of the Jordan Valley, where so many Palestinians are there and they're under the, the occupation. He's promising the, the Zionists to annex, annex, to annex, to add that part to their occupying entity. Anyway, then the Muslims expanded. They took Iraq in the time of the Prophet, in the time of Sayyidina Omar. And they took parts of Turkey here. This is, this is Turkey basically was the Roman Empire and expanding here somewhere. And Iraq and Iran, they were under who? Under the Persians. As here for some of the Arabs in Sham, they were some of them, their, their, their alliance with, with Romans, some of them their alliance with, with Persians. Now here in the time of Sayyidina Uthman, all of Iran and they even reached where? Armenia. Where's Armenia? Let's go back to Armenia. Here. Here. See Armenia, neighboring Turkey, and neighboring Iran. Armenia and Azerbaijan. Armenia and Azerbaijan. Here in Armenia and Azerbaijan, an army from Sham here. And an army from Iraq here. This is Mosul. This is Kirkuk. This is Iraq. This is Iraq. This is Syria. An army from Iraq and an army from Sham, they met where? Here. Here. Azerbaijan and Armenia. What happened? Let's read from Sahih Bukhari. Imam Bukhari radiallahu anhu narrated from Sayyidina Anas bin Malik radiallahu anhu. He said, Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman radiallahu anhu, he was 
with the people of Sham and the people of Iraq at the conquest of Armenia and Azerbaijan. And, say, and, and now Muslims are meeting from two different countries and they're sitting and they, they're reading Quran even in, in that time everywhere this is how Muslims everywhere every time they make use of their time they utilize their free time they read Quran they learn Quran they teach they teach one another the Holy Quran this is an ummah an oral people right who are always careful about their book and transmitting their book so now some of the people of Sham heard some of the people of Iraq they heard different way of reading and now these are not Sahaba they are not even some of them not even students of Sahaba students of students so now one of them started how are you reading this way that's not right he say no how are you reading this way no that's not right they started arguing why because they did not learn so some incidents happen huh? some incidents happen right some incident doesn't mean all of them were ignorant right some of them some of incident of the incidents happen one of them was really another person he said no no it's he said no who told you this so they started arguing they said okay Sayyidina Hudayfa ibn al-Yaman is a smart Sahabi he said as an authentic hadith people used to ask Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa about good but I used to ask him about evil so that I avoid it and this is why Sayyidina Hudayfa he has so many special hadith and he used to be the keeper of the secrets of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he told him many secrets sallallahu alayhi wa about the names of the hypocrites and many other things so he's a smart sahabi what did he do he left the battle he left that place and ran ran where all the way to al Madinah, to Sayyiduna Uthman, the Khalifa, the Caliph and he told him, Ya Khalifa Rasulullah, Ya Amir al-Mu'mineen O leader of the believers, catch up catch up the Muslims before they differ in their book as Jews and Christians differed in their scriptures Jews and, and Christians differ in some centuries ago the Christians they met to, in, in Nicaea Council to adopt the Bibles that they want to adopt and they selected some Bibles and they discarded some other Bibles that never happened for Muslims never ever never ever and this is why now there are hidden Bibles this is why the, the Gospel of Barnabas you can find it online, the Gospel of Barnabas. It mentions the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, and it mentions that Sayyidina Isa was not crucified, etc. etc. And there are some, even in the current Bibles, there are some signals about that. Anyway, they differed about their books because they did not memorize it, because it was not even recorded in the times of their prophets. They lost it, they distorted it, they changed it. Then they some of them claimed, ah. Uh, a revelation came to this person the revelation and this is why you find contradiction in it you find so many contradictions I met so many Christians they cannot find there's no answer they have no answer Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu anhu now what did he do and what did he want to do what did the Muslims ha do in the time of Sayyidina Abu Bakr they compiled the whole Quran and made a copy of what of the pieces or the parchments that were written in the time of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa so now did Muslims in the time of Sayyidina Umar and Uthman did they have a, a copy of the Quran that were compiled and that is exactly like what's written what was written in the presence of the Prophet did we have that sallallahu alayhi wa yes did they use it in the time of Sayyidina Umar they did not need it in the time of Sayyidina Uthman they did not need it until that year came when that year came in the time of Sayyidina Uthman anhu, almost 21 after 21 years after the Prophet وسلم, migration, almost the second year of Sayyidina Uthman's Khilafah. What did Sayyidina Uthman do? He sent where was the book? Where was the mushaf? Where was the mushaf? Where did we leave it last class? Before last class. Where did they keep the mushaf? That Sayyidina Abu Bakr combined. 
They gave it to Sayyidina Omar. Then after, when Sayyidina Omar passed away, it was where? Speak now. Sayyidina Hafsa, his daughter, the wife of the Prophet So now Imam Bukhari continues his narration. He says, Uthman sent to Hafsa, Arsili ilayna bis suhaf. Send us those scrolls, those manuscripts. Send them to us. So that, listen now, this is the key word that should make you understand the mistake that some shapes now on YouTube and some scholars, even some ancient scholars, the mistake that they made. Look what he told her. Send us the suhaf, the scrolls or the manuscripts so that we make copies and return it back to you. What did he want to do? Make copies. Why? He's going to make copies of that master, prophetic, Siddiqi copy, sacred copy. He's going to make copies and send them to the main Muslim cities at that time. And he will send with every copy a teacher of the Sahaba who's, who is certified, a Hafiz. A great teacher so that that city and that country they will read and they will use that copy and make copies for themselves and read that copy according to the reading of this teacher who sent with that copy now here comes the mistake of some people and some scholars and unfortunately this is the predominant opinion because of the oil school that's my opinion because of the oil school the petrodollar school which is the Salafi school that they, they uh, put so much money on the internet, so much money on universities, free books, free scholarships. So their opinion is, is, you find it in the front. Why? Just like when you search a question, you find their website. But alhamdulillah now it started changing. That predominant opinion, they say, Sayyidina Uthman, he cancelled six of the Ahruf Sab'a, and kept one half to keep Muslims together. Do you understand? So we say that cannot be right in any way because Sayyidina Uthman doesn't have the authority to abrogate anything of the Quran, nor anyone of the Sahaba has that authority. And number two, what is that half? What are those six ahraf that he cancelled? No one knows. And number three, if we look at the Quran, we find all differences. And they said he kept the language of Quraysh because for them those seven Ahraf are seven languages or seven dialects. But well, if we look at the Quran, are those differences only about dialects? No. So that doesn't work. So the reality and what we have of the ten Qiraat proves prove that opinion wrong. So Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu anhu never cancelled any harf of the Ahraf. What he did, he sent copies of the master copy so that Muslims they don't differ and they follow that copy and the reading of the teacher who is sent with that copy and that will finish the differences and the proof is if they if, if the different Ahruf was the reason well we still we have different dialects and still we have different Ahruf do you understand so that is what Sayyidina Uthman did he copied those copies that master copy he made seven copies and he sent them to the, the Muslim countries. So Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu anhu, he got the copies from Sayyidina Hafsa, and now Sayyidina Uthman will form a committee. Who was in that committee, and what did they do? And now we have a problem. And I made the whole last class as an introduction, now to show how we're gonna solve that problem. What is that problem? Now we have this copy, and as we mentioned, this copy, there are some of the differences in the Qiraat that cannot be, cannot be accommodated in one copy. Who can give me an example of that? Who can give me an example of that? One or some of the differences in the Qiraat that cannot be accommodated in one copy. If I tell you Yaqtunun and Yuqtanun, can that be accommodated in one copy? Yes, because it's just different harakat and different dots and there were no dots and no harakat. So, it can be accommodated in one copy. What about if there's an ayah that has one word 
or one pronoun that is extra? Can that be accommodated in one copy? Can that be? That cannot be accommodated in one copy. For example, as I told you last time, وَمَنْ يَتَوَلَّ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ الْغَنِيُّ الْحَمِيمُ And the other قراءة of Shamiyin and Madaniyin, the, the قراءة of Sham and قراءة of Medina, they read وَمَنْ يَتَوَلَّ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ الْغَنِيُّ الْحَمِيمُ without هو. So now they have this copy in al Medina, which was وَمَنْ يَتَوَلَّ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ الْغَنِيُّ الْحَمِيمُ without هو. Without هو. Now, and we have another qira'ah, how are we going to accommodate that? If they're going to put it like in the margin, some people would think, oh, this is just like explanation, or this is maybe the main, the qira is in the main text is the, is the right one, or the stronger one, and this one in the margin is less strong or something, so they might get confused. If they write them together, that will still be confusing. What did they do? Sayyidina Uthman with his knowledge of the qira'at, with Sayyidina Zayd, Sayyidina Ubay, Sayyidina Abin Mas'ud, Sayyidina Ali, all those great Sahaba, they know the qira'at. Sayyidina Uthman, this genius, along with the community, with the Sahaba, what did he do? Those ayat, or those differences, in very few ayat, like a couple, like less than 20, that cannot be accommodated in one copy, or some scholars they make it 50, but it depends how they, you, ca you count it, and the differences you, you calculate. What did he do? He put them in some of the copies, he accommodated in different copies. Like in some copies, he kept them, وَمَنْ يَتَوَلَّ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ الْغَنِيُّ الْحَمِيدِ And in another copy, of those six copies that he made, or seven, he put, وَمَا يَتَوَلَّ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ الْغَنِيُّ الْحَمِيمُ And now what did he do? He knows the Sahabi, he read this way. Or he taught this student this way. So he sent this Sahabi who read with this Qira'a. He gave him this Mus'hab and told him, you go and teach in that country. And he took this Sahabi who learned, for example, this ayah, سَارِعُوا إِلَى مَغْفِرَةِ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ He listed the wasari, without the wall. And he put it in that mushaf. So in this way, with his knowledge and with the consultation of Sahaba, he sent every Sahabi with a mushaf that suits the qira'a that he masters. Can get, did you hear? Focus well because you will not find, I never, I, I couldn't find any scholar, not even in Arabic, who explained this way, rather than in English. Not even in Arabic, explained it this way, explained this topic this way. And it took me dozens of hours to, to inshallah, to find that, inshallah, the, the right opinion, which is, this is the opinion of Imam ibn al-Jazali and the greatest Imams of Quran. So this way, Sayyidina Uthman, what did he do? He accommodated all of the ahruf in those copies. And now, every Muslim, major Muslim city, Sham, Sham, Basra, Kufa, Mecca, Medina, these are the main five. And he kept one for himself as well. Six. Those main cities, now they have one copy, and with a reciter who's reading, teaching according to that copy with the dialects that he learned from the Prophet ﷺ. In this way he accounted, accommodated all the qira'at. In this way now every Muslim city, they have the master copy similar to what has been written in the time of the Prophet ﷺ and will be taught the same way this Sahabi got it from the Prophet ﷺ. Now is this qira only mastered by this Sahabi? No. Many Sahaba they knew. And there are people who are already there, Sahaba already in those countries and students in those countries who learned the same way. Did you get that? Is that clear? So he commanded, he made a committee, inshallah, we're gonna start from there. Who are the commanders? Let's finish the hadith in Bukhari. He commanded Zayd bin Thabit again, that great master, radiallahu anhu. He's the pioneer of this field. Zayd bin Thabit and Abdullah bin Zubayr and Sa'id ibn al As and Abdul Rahman ibn al Harith ibn Isha. These four people and commanded them to do this great task. And he told them, in case you differ about something with Zayd, 
because Sayyidina Zayd was in Al-Madinah and those are Meccans, those are from Quraysh and Sayyidina Zayd from Al-Ansar, from Medina he told them if you differ about something you consult with me and we should write it according to the language or the way of Quraysh that, that Quraysh used to write okay in case you differ about something if Zayd says no this way I write it this way so no we have to write it the same way and which is the way of Quraysh then when they made those copies Sayyidina Uthman returned the books to Sayyidina Hafsa and he sent this is in Bukhari still in Bukhari huh? and he sent to every major city a Mus'haf and he commanded the Muslims any person who has any copy of the Quran he has to burn it you have to burn that copy because we don't want confusion we don't want people to come later and say oh no this is the Quran no 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 we don't want to leave any room for any confusion or any possible change this is the copy that is made from the copy that was written in the presence of Rasulullah we don't want any other copies and all Sahaba agreed with him and they burned their personal masahib and that was very difficult for many of them especially Sayyidina Abdullah bin Mas'ud it was very difficult imagine he wrote it with his own hand with, with his own hands and he wrote maybe some commentary and some tafsir it's very dear to him but finally he was convinced and, and he approved and all Muslims now agree by consensus all of them without any exception they agree on those copies and then what did the Muslims do? they made countless copies of those copies countless copies of those copies what happened next and how we we have the dots and that development that took place later on let's finish with these two pictures and inshallah we'll continue next time so the last stage we said it was with Sayyidina, uh, Sayyidina Hafsa Sayyidina Uthman as you can see this is just uh, what do they say? Like an example, uh, how Sayyidina Ahmad made many copies and sent to the major Muslim, to the major Muslim cities. As you can see here, for example, it's just an example of he sent with every Mus'haf a skillful qariq to teach the people and as you can see here he sent to Sham, to Kufa, Basra, Mecca, Medina, Yemen, Bahrain according to some narrations and according to some narrations only the five, the five major cities that was how Sayyidina Uthman radiallahu anhu then as you can see here of course now he told people anyone who want to make a kabi come you have to make it from this master copy this is a sacred copy this was made from the copies that were written in the presence of Rasulullah and if you want to make copies you make from this copy as you can see then Muslims made countless copies of those of those masahib then even later on we the scholars of Islam subhanallah amazing scholars they are far-sighted they were afraid that those six major masahib they will not last forever right they will not last forever they might get burned they, they didn't have the tools like now to preserve and keep the book right even now the book if you read it sometimes it will get torn and so they were afraid that those copies those are special copies they were afraid that they will burn, get burnt or get lost what did they do? in those times, in the time of the Umayyads the Arabic writing started changing and developing and we started having harakat having the dots, having the vowels to make it easier for non-Arabs to read correctly, to read precisely this is why I told you Arabic is the easiest language to read and write without without comparison with any other language because every sound represent every letter represent a sound and every letter has its own vowel so you can read any word correctly just if you learn the sounds and the letters and the vowels 
What did they do? Let's leave it for next time. How they're going to preserve those books? And this is what happened. Those books got lost. We don't have those, any of those six copies. Some scholars argue we have some of them. But most scholars, they say, no, that those copies that we have now are not of those six copies that date back to Sayyidina Uthman's time. But still, we can now, by the thing that the, those great scholars did, we can now generate a copy exactly like the copy of those six copies that were copied in the time of Sayyidina Uthman. How we can do that? That's what we're going to learn, inshallah, next time. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us all those who listen to the speech and follow its best. And who understand and who act upon what they learn. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of the true people of the Quran who will be honored to be part of this great process of preserving the Quran. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Alhamdulillah. 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 Alhamdul